Welcome to Decades of Horror, the classic era. Blood of Christ, demon, a curse upon this man, a curse that he will never forget me. Blood of my body until the grave, a curse that he will never forget me. <laughs> this is that you okay? You okay? <laughs> Cursing takes it out of you, doesn't it? This is episode 152, recorded May 21st, 2023. Gruesome Magazine. My name is Jeff Moore, and on this podcast we cover the good, the bad, and maybe even the ugly horror films released since the beginning of time through 1969. In each episode we'll discuss the monster spirit cycles and villains that have haunted movie-going audiences since... The dawn of film history. You put Decades too much uh, elk testicle in there, Chad. Sorry, yeah, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. I'll, I took an extra elk ball today <laughs> and almost choked on it. We don't normally talk about that, but if you listen to the last episode, you would understand. So that probably doesn't sound any better. <laughs> Doc's like, "Where am I?" <laughs> Uh, decades of Horror at Gruesome Magazine are partnering with Play Now Media on several other channels. Uh, classic Era is on the Classic Sci-Fi Movie Channel, the Classic Horror Movie Channel, and the Wicked Horror TV Channel. So check us out there. We're there. It's cool. Yeah. They, have, they have a lot of cool movies, too, so mm -hmm. I frequently flip, flip through there. Anyway, with me this week are my incredible co-hosts. Chad Hunt, co-host on Decades for the 1970s and 1980s, film producer and director with Wreak Havoc Productions, and a comic book artist and writer. Oh, I'm sorry, Il DeChadio, I didn't realize. <laughs> DeChadio. Il DeChadio. I don't know what that translates to, but... Uh, <laughs> Probably the big it, dummy. Don't think it stuck matters. <laughs> no. How you doing, buddy? I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm feeling proud today. I'm feeling proud like this is the world's greatest uh classic era movie podcast out there right now yeah 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 so i feel proud to be here today mm. well good just like the fantastic four magazine it's the world's greatest comic magazine that's a bold statement but he, mm -hmm. it's on every issue so we need to put that on, on it, our somewhere. It, you know you say it three times and it becomes fact yeah oh. That's... Well, I said it a lot of times before the show. Yeah. Yeah. So. Also with us is Daphne, who is awesome, stupendous, and likable as hell, and has the cutest <laughs> That's nephews. That's debatable. You've, and has the cutest <laughs> nephews you've ever seen. How are you doing, Daphne? Yes, yeah, she does. I'm doing real good. It's always nice to see you guys. Agreed. Same here. <laughs> also with us is the one and only Doc Rotten. And someday I'm going to break out into song with some pop song that has the word doctor in it i can't decide <laughs> there's so many uh, there are do? there are that's why i thought i could do a different one every episode for quite a while ah. just sing the dr pepper theme no <laughs> be a pepper how you doing doc <laughs> don't do that <laughs> i'm doing good thank you jeff sir this was uh interesting movie what? Yes, <laughs> it is. They I don't know are. if I was prepared for this movie. <laughs> That's the way we like it. Um, One does not right. prepare for old demonio. <laughs> no. One so, just absorbs. Uh, <laughs> spoiler alert: Even though our title says we're a review, we do much more than that. So uh, we're going to talk a lot about this. It won't take as long as a movie, but it might come close. <laughs> So, it might come close, yeah. Uh, we're just going to chat about it and talk about whatever trips our trigger. And we're going to spoil the heck out of it. So if you haven't seen this, you should probably go check it out right this minute. It's playing on Shutter, And it's also available on Blu-ray. Uh, what we start off by doing is giving a few basic details of the film that we're covering with our follow-up by our first impressions. And then some taglines. And finally, uh, we just move into general discussion of whatever trips our trigger. <laughs> Hopefully, relating to the film, unless <laughs> unless Tef 
<laughs> Jeff gets off on tangential. Fat yeah. chance. <laughs> you go off on a tangent. I've never heard such. No, I never. Malarkey. I never do. Chad likes tangentials. <laughs> Who doesn't? As long as they're better than elk balls. Though. <laughs> That's right. All right, our movie. With with no further ado. Our movie. Oh yeah, we got to do this. Il Demonio from 1963, directed by Brunello Rondi, written by Brunello Rondi and Ugo Guerra and Luciano Martino. The cast includes Delia or Delia Lavi, Frank Wolf, Dario Dolce, Franca Mazzoni. Production company. It is an Italo-French production. So. Titanus, Vox Films, Le Film Marceau, Cochinor, Cochinor mm -hmm. are all involved. It was filmed in Basilicate, Italy, which is kind of the arch <laughs> or the ankle bone of Italy. The ankle <laughs> between bone the toe and the heel. <laughs> Let me anyway. basilicate my intentions. <laughs> It was released <laughs> on August 27, 1963 at the 24th Venice Film Festival. Uh, it's also known as... Uh, who's, who's got the French tone here? Le Demon dans la chair. And that means the demon in the flesh. Mm. Or in the demon. U.S., it's just been known as the demon. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Well, you could do the Finnish part. Pikachu demon. Yeah. <laughs> That's Finnish for a small Pikulan village. <laughs> demoni, I think, which means a small village demon. And I'm not sure if that means, you know, it's a village demon that's small, or is it the demon of a small village? I, I don't it's know. probably many, a small village. Too many adjectives there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, synopsis. Puri, and her full name is Purificata, I think, and... and uh, they shorten it to Puri as a nickname, is a young peasant woman obsessed with Antonio, a married man. Her fixation on Antonio leads her to practice witchcraft in an attempt to direct him to her, but instead she becomes the subject of a witch hunt when she becomes apparently possessed. <laughs> and uh, this was, I just threw this up, that is uh, Miss Lavi. This 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 movie has cool sets and mm -hmm. uh, very cool cinematography. Yeah. All right. So I think maybe we should get to our uh, first impressions. A, eh? A, eh? uh, Daphne. This is your pick. Mm -hmm. So what are your impressions of this? And why did you pick this film? Um. I don't remember exactly why I picked it. I think I was just looking at some folk horror that um, I just wanted to see some folk horror um, and came across it. I really like this movie. Um, I like the story. The actor did an amazing job. It's beautiful. Um, I like the, the naturalness of it, the realism of it. Um, I really, I really, really liked it. And it was pretty darn intense. And I feel like it was a really good example of folk horror. And it made me think of, about a lot of things like uh, religion and women and, and then just different cinematography stuff. Um, I wish that she would have been in more movies or I just need to see more movies maybe that she's in because I think she did a, an amazing job in this movie. But um, that was my first impression. I liked it a lot. Yeah, okay. Uh, Doc, how about you? <laughs> I, you... I I knew nothing about this movie. Yeah. I knew nothing about this movie until you brought it up and I was like, and I confused it with like uh, one of the uh, other, other. it doesn't matter. I was like, what's this movie? Another um, movie with Demon in the title. Right? Yeah, there's a lot of them. <laughs> um, but anyway, regardless of that, I at least was, you watched the right movie, though. I did watch the right movie. <laughs> um, it was it was absolutely fascinating. I'm not sure that I under 
it all. Uh, I can't <laughs> wait to hear what Daphne has to bring to this because I think it'll bring a lot of depth to this movie. I was fascinated by the uh, uh, the lead actress. She's just uh, magnetic in this role. Um, troubled, but magnetic. Um, she is not quite all there. The character, I'm sure the actress is, but I have no idea. But the character is... Um, I, I can't. Well, I mean, she it she she t- ping pongs back and forth between I'm a witch, I'm possessed, I'm a witch, I'm possessed. I just horny for that guy. Yeah. Um, but I you know, so I'm not really sure what's going on. But it's uh, there are scenes in here that are definitely um, uh, influential, intentionally or not, on other films that we would see in decades that would follow. Um, and the cinematography is absolutely stunning. Uh, that was, but above all, were the location. I mean, this this it starts off saying, and you know, you, it, it has like a little thing about the folk, kind of a folk horror history, and then it goes modern day, and then it, of course, you know, now it's sixty years old. But it, it just it's like even in nineteen sixty, this was <laughs> modern day, and, so, and it just feels so. Um, genuine and uh, it was just great locations and uh, it's so confined in that that you you really get the sense of the area you're in Um, even as somebody that you know has never been anywhere near that area you know it's very foreign to me Uh, but the the buildings and the the, you know the large stretches of land and um, you know (laughs) You, when you walk to something, you have to walk over the mountain, down the mountain, through the woods, and literally mm-hmm. got to crawl through, which I'm pretty sure they didn't have to do, but they chose to in this movie. I enjoyed it. Um, I, I'm i still scratching my head a little bit, uh, but I enjoyed it. Yay. Well, That's good. what I say. We do that a lot on this show. Do we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. Ill. Um, I've I've seen this movie on Shutter, but it looked like um, it looked like one of those cheap, the little thumbnail they have for it. It didn't doesn't really tell you anything about the movie, and um, so I always kept scrolling past it. But um, this uh, this movie um, is mesmerizing. It's a little weird. It's a little it's off-putting. It's disturbing in in, in quite a few areas. Um, I felt uh, so bad for this this lady. Um, she couldn't catch a break through this this whole movie, and um, and I think and and I, the thing I love about it is you never know for sure what the problem is. You don't really know if she has some sort of mental breakdown here or if she's really possessed and it the movie kind of leaves it up in the air a little bit um but in, in in some of the cases in here you can see why she would feel like that you know she's she exclaimed at one point that she spoke with the devil she, she spoke with satan and that could mean any number of things uh, as to what happened to her during this movie uh, you know, uh, it couldn't, it, it doesn't have to mean a literal, uh, I spoke, I saw, or I spoke with Satan. It could be figurative as to what was happening to her. And she pulled this off so well. Um, she's, she reminded me a lot of the woman from, uh, the white reindeer. Hmm. She's just, uh, okay. incredibly, uh, interesting to watch, to watch her act. And um, and watch her bring this character to life. This, uh, well, and we'll talk about more about that later. But yeah, I was really, really surprised at how well uh, this movie was made. Beautiful, beautiful uh, shots. Like when she was up on the cliff side when the wedding was going on, mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. church is down at the bottom, and she's. Uh, it was that, those are just beautiful mm-hmm. shots, beautiful countryside, Great and everything like that. Yeah. So it was very, very, very good. I enjoyed it immensely. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did too, and I had known about it, uh, and I actually uh, 
owned it, but it was in this big box set, and so I hadn't got around to it yet. I'd watched a couple of films from it, and uh, it's a it's a collection of folklore stuff from Severin. Um, but I, I this was one of those movies that, in terms of action, maybe. Well, I guess there is. I was going to say it's there's a, not a lot a that happens, but that, but it, mm -hmm. but it, but there is a lot that happens. But there's a lot of scenes of like chaps and walking and stuff. But it's, but mm -hmm. it was. I found it. Uh, well, I, I think maybe you said fascinating, Chad. But I was or mesmerizing. That was it. I was, mm -hmm. I was locked in the whole time. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there wasn't something action going on, I was looking at the location or the sets or the the other people in the shot. This is obviously Dalia Levy's movie. She is yeah. like the centerpiece, and in I think, I think she's in almost every scene, um, with few exceptions. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I liked it too, and it is. It's a, it's one of those classic uh, conundrums, I guess. Of is she possessed, or is she have some psychological problem, and. Uh, how much of this is it is due to the village and its patriarchy and its weird blend of Christianity and witchcraft? Mm. With God, man, did they have some strange customs? But it was mm. the the location was fascinating. This little village that they were in. Anyway, I loved it. I'm glad you picked it. Uh, yeah. So. I'm so excited to talk about it. <laughs> yay! Yay! Well, before we go any farther. Now is the time on Sprockets when we do Taglines with Chad. Oh, only two two bars on that one. Huh? Okay. Yeah, I just I always forget to turn off the loop. <laughs> I was only gonna do one. Anyway. Your your ADHD's getting better. That's what, uh, that's what yeah. Okay. Okay, taglines uh, for the demon are um, very short, very short. <laughs> There's only one tagline, and it goes a little something like this. One night she wakes up bound to the bed and her body is bleeding. The revenge of the devil will not delay. It just won't. Believe me, I know. <laughs> we talked about this yesterday over tea. <laughs> <laughs> over tea. Like what was in that tea? That's the there will there will be no delay. Huh? That's and my business. That's been <laughs> taglines with Chad. <laughs> Tagline with Chad. Tagline with Chad. Yes. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, there weren't wasn't very many on this one, and it actually seems like I, I think somebody probably translated that because it wasn't exactly bound to her bed and her body bleeding. Yeah, maybe. I guess that makes sense. But anyway. All right. Well, let's take a look at some uh, posters here. Um, this is the one that I saw the most of, maybe because it was in IMDb, but uh, it's mm -hmm. got her name. And Frank Wolf is the other lead. Little Frankie Wolf? Uh, and there's the scissors stuck in the floor, which happens. Mm -hmm. It's always good when something actually happens. That's on the poster. <laughs> and then there's this one, mm -hmm. which again. That's a good one. Yeah. I don't know. That was very strange. That was after she made her post. Mm. Oh, there's a tag like we missed. That's more a blurb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that goes on. And then we have this one. Remember, this was ah. a. Uh, What's that? Oh, I okay. If I may interrupt, yes. I did a little. I did uh, do my duty and I did a little research. Good. Jeff was like, Jeff was like, why? I don't know the meaning of the scissors in the floor. And I was like, that's got to mean something. <laughs> There's all kinds of crap about scissors, being all kinds of stuff. And usually with marriage, but one of them is that if they if they're dropped and stick in the ground or floor, it's a symbol of a death omen. Oh. Ah, there you go. I know if you run with them too, that's a death on them. Yeah, according to my mother. <laughs> well, now you know. So I've been thinking. You you brought up uh, Chad that this was similar to the woman in uh, 
the white reindeer, but I, I, I was thinking we've actually had three in a row with these mesmerizing female leads with Mia Farrow mm. and Rosemary's mm. Baby, um, Miriami and the white reindeer, and now uh, Dalia Levy in this one. Um, and a knife gets stuck in the floor in that one. Mm-hmm. That's Which, what I now that of. I know yeah. that that actually makes mm-hmm. some oh, sense. Wow. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. even though we, we kind of thought it was an accident. So cool, thank mm-hmm. you, thank you, Doc. Um, and Good here's Doc. here's the French one again. <laughs> and again, we said that was like Demon of the Flesh, I think. Demon in the Flesh. Or in the chair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's that? The demon in the chair? No, I'm just, I'm sorry. Being silly. Demon in, I know. Well, I know. <laughs> It'd be so much easier if the languages sounded the same. Oh, wait, it, then they wouldn't be different languages. But they, oh, and then this one with, so oh my crazy. lord. That is so and I can't weird. figure out, it's not a good enough resolution to, to see the fine print at the bottom. So I couldn't tell what language it's supposed to be or what country it's from. And I, I actually was thinking maybe it's not from this movie, but I'm think that's her head stretched on the top but it could be yeah. somebody else so hey if somebody's seen that poster someplace else or maybe i'll look it up and find it later on figure yeah, out where it's from makes but... absolutely no sense no it doesn't and it's creepy it 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 yeah. no, yeah. <laughs> there's no doll I'd like I to sleep <laughs> all right well this is directed by Brunello Rondi, which I knew nothing about. Um, turns out he was a uh, co-writer on a lot of Fellini stuff in the Ooh. 50s and early 60s. And in fact, received nominations for Academy Awards as co-writers of Eight and a Half and La Dolce Vita. So this was his, uh, it's not his first directing, but it's, you know, he didn't do a lot of directing, but some people thought very highly of him. Uh, he didn't pick a particular genre or anything like that. So it's an interesting movie. Anybody else look up anything about him? Or No, I, I didn't look up much about him, but I was just really um, amazed that he was the writer. I, I just think the story <laughs> and the way that in the script and everything is so good. And it's such an interesting story and a beautiful story. I was impressed that he he wrote it as well. Well, and I think maybe he was just used to working in teams a lot of times. I think mm-hmm. the uh, Academy Awards that he was involved in had like four writers on each of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this one, I guess it's not surprising. He has a couple other writers. The producer, Luciano Martino, was one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I should, I don't, I don't have a slide on these guys, but... Luciano Martino was, uh, according to some sources, like was a force of nature in the Italian uh, B-movie cinema. Hmm. Um, And his brother is Sergio Martini, who, or Martino, Martini, Martino, who also uh, directed a lot of uh, of, uh, Giallo and and some other stuff. Hmm. So, uh, Luciano's first, this is his first producing credit and Sergio, his brother was assistant director on this or second assistant mm-hmm. director or something like that. Uh, and then he followed this one up with, uh, Baba's The Whip and the Body, which also stars Levy. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, overall he had 135 producer credits and 94 writing credits Sergio had 68 director credits and 48 writer credits. And out of Sergio's films, we have covered, on the 70s, we did Torso. That was a Sergio Martino-directed film. And on the 80s, we did Screamers, also known as Island of the Fishmen, which most places... I don't know why we chose Screamers in 1981, but most places it's listed as Island of the Fishman in 1979. But it's one of those movies with lots of releases and lots of different titles. And a lot of different cuts. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, as a matter of fact. Uh, so anyway, I thought that was interesting that these two kind of got 
kind of got started here and and uh Luciano did a bunch or produced a bunch of giallos from the 70s and I'm sure we'll do some of these but they're the you know they're those weird titles that uh you don't normally when you see them you go well that's giallo <laughs> <laughs> I mean there's just no way around it well, well Frank, go? the Frank Wolf ended up in one the the actor he ended up in uh uh death walks in high on high heels yes uh, yes this was one um uh your vice is a locked room and only i have the key <laughs> that's a great title yeah uh, well that's a pretty well known one too and then there's one about the the strange vice of mrs ward that's another one i've seen a lot i haven't watched it yet i will but i haven't watched it yet and uh Spaghetti Western, Arizona Colt, Hired Gun. Um, but but you brought up Frank Wolf, Doc. Um, mm -hmm. Let's take a look at him. He's one of those guys that kind of seemed familiar, but yet I couldn't place anything on him. And, and he went, mm -hmm. he was in a couple of Corman films in the 50s, and then he went over to Italy and mm -hmm. made a name doing, basically was like a major force and spaghetti westerns and he was uh hired to be the villain or was asked to be the villain for a fistful of dollars mm. but he turned it down i can't remember why he turned it down if he had something else going on or what but uh anyway and then when the spaghetti westerns kind of died out he started doing some italian crime movies um unfortunately he suffered from depression he killed himself uh, in the early 70s, I think he was like 43 or something. Mm. Um, but he's really the only person with a with a recognizable part in this. I mean, or, or, or a... Right, because yeah. mm -hmm. he's... Everybody else just says a couple lines. Session, huh? you know? yeah. yeah, and he's the only one that gets uh, scenes without uh, Delia in them, our, oh, our main character, when mm -hmm. he goes and talks to the the mother of his future wife and... yeah. And all the stuff, mm -hmm. and, um, and then there's another time when they're talking when they begin the witch hunt at the end. Mm -hmm. He gets uh, he kind of leads it a little bit. Yeah, so, yeah he kind of goes over. It's... He doesn't know how to sow a field terribly well, but hey. <laughs> yeah, he was struggling on that. He was, I would struggle too. <laughs> I would look. Uh, uh, that wasn't primal farmland, though. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Trying to beat beat the thing back together with a rock or something. I was like, okay, good yeah. luck with that. But, uh... Well, you mentioned uh, Doc. You mentioned the uh, the city. This is where she's looking over the cliff. She's like so standing beautiful. on a cliff, looking down on the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then the town is just like it's almost like built into the. Mm -hmm mountainside yeah. and there's all yeah. these layers everywhere they're always mm -hmm. walking up stairs and walking like around mm -hmm. and stuff and walking mm -hmm. um crazy and then in that one scene you're in the background you see almost like what we would have called uh cliff dwellers you know there, there mm -hmm. was like it, it looked like cliff dwellings with holes in the side of this one cliff mm -hmm. that looked mm -hmm. abandoned you know very mm -hmm. Yeah, I love yeah, it that. It's beautiful. The wedding scene was interesting because mm -hmm. you know, it looked like, well, one, it looked like everybody that actually lived in the town took part of it, which was really authentic. I mean, it just felt mm -hmm. cool. And uh, the kids were like, you know, you get this procession of the, you know, of, of our, the, the obsession of our lead characters getting married. And you get them and their families and then whoever's going to it and they're, making this weird journey <laughs> to the church and all these kids are just like doing circles around them and running around them. Mm -hmm. I would be like, I'd be so mad. <laughs> it was like intended or like part of the and They just kind of ignored them. Yeah. Everybody mm -hmm. else had just yeah. kind of ignored them. It's kind of the thing to do. It, it's uh, which leads me to like, that's one of the things I really loved about this movie, about this town and, and the area that, um, and the characters that would come in and out of, uh, of the story is that they all felt from that area. They all felt real and authentic. Um, mm -hmm. And you just get this really interesting uh, taste of what 
it felt what it, what yeah, it yeah. should have mm-hmm. felt like, right? Um, and then a lot of folklore comes out of that, you know, mm-hmm. how they how they treat her when you know mm-hmm. either as a witch, like when, when she's in the church and everybody backs away, mm-hmm. and then or the you know the the actual exorcism that they have, which was mm-hmm. I wasn't prepared for. That was really fun, and then yeah. you know, mm-hmm. uh, and then back to being a witch. Really fascinating stuff, and that's really what got me the most was yeah. Just, the whole scene the authenticity <laughs> it, it, mm-hmm. even during the wedding when they were they were showing some of the um um i guess traditions of the wedding like when they jumped over the threshold of yeah, the, mm-hmm. the yeah. and and then then mm-hmm. the, that's, that's the, the bride and groom though everybody yeah. else mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. and then the older folks preparing the marriage bed and they put yes. the grim reaper's scythe underneath the bed and i was mm-hmm. like oh ah, you mm-hmm. can check that out you know mm-hmm. yeah, but it was mm-hmm. cool to see that kind of stuff uh, as well. Oh, you and the, and the uh, got to get the bed ready. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> that's right. That's right. And they put all the uh, dried grapes or sour grapes or something. Yeah, dried, dried grapes. Uh, <laughs> they were raisins. The Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, when they all left, they left two people to guard, and they they were that's a thing. You actually mm-hmm. left somebody to guard so they couldn't nobody could come and put a curse on them. Mm-hmm. And the way you did that was by leaving a dead animal of some kind. And so she's mm-hmm. carrying, I don't know what it was. Like I think cat. it was a cat. Yeah. You think it was a cat? I thought maybe mm-hmm. it was a rabbit. But that I was, was hoping it was a cat. Oh. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I thought it was a rabbit at first, but I, I think it was a cat. Yeah, but, I think it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love anyway, the yeah. naturalism of it too, the, the realism of it. I just, it really kind of sucked me into the story. Also, how it kind of started off a little bit. Um, you guys were talking about how you don't really know what's going on, which I, which I loved. I love not knowing if she's possessed, obsessed, you know, mentally ill. Um, but in the beginning, it's almost like not a documentary, but it was just kind of like you were watching this village from mm-hmm. kind of like, I don't know, anthrop- maybe a little bit of anthropology or something. I'm not sure, but I like how it, it's, it just kind of brought you into the story. And then the naturalism of it all just yeah. made me really part of the story and care about, care about these people. And I loved the, I loved how there was um, like stuff on people's clothes, like dirt and, and mm-hmm. dust. It was like, mm-hmm. nothing was perfect, you know? Um, yeah. It just, it felt really, it, I, did and I, it gave the movie yeah. time to let things play out, mm-hmm. you know, and, and 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 that's the slow burn part of it, I guess. Mm-hmm. But I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh no, it's yeah. I was just gonna say I don't I don't I'm pretty ignorant about Fellini, and um like I hear people talk about neo realism and stuff in, in in Italy, so I wonder if that's maybe part of it too, just kind of having the people in the village be in it, um or having it um kind of being char- part of the character of the movie. But it does blend really well with the folk horror, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It just really sucks you into to that part. Yeah, all the all the superstitions about mm-hmm. the curse. Yeah, and yeah. Yep. about it. Like when she and she comes into the church. Like I mentioned earlier, she comes into church. She starts like standing right in the middle of everything. And yeah. Then, and, she right, didn't care. And, and and they're like one lady pulls her daughter back. Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Stay over here. Right. It's like she, she had already a, she had, had a this repu- reputation. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, apparently yeah. she had. It, she gets. Well, let me let me. So that the, the I mean, we open with the scene of her mm-hmm. making this uh, blood curse mm-hmm. potion or something. You know, right. she's like. Uh, I think I got that somewhere here. Yeah. Yeah, right away she's she's mm-hmm. putting that pin in her in her yeah. breast and bleeding. Her hair, yeah. yeah, in her hair. And then she. Hi, you know, she crushes it up with something and mix it around. Did she put it in it. bread or something? I think she put I it in bread. I think she did. I think she put it in bread when she mm-hmm. went to go meet went to go meet Antonio. Yeah. Is that at, what that was? That, I was mm-hmm. It looked like it was like what you would get bone marrow out of, like a. That's I what I I was wondering about that too. But I I wonder if it was um like bread, like a like a baguette roll or something mm-hmm. like yeah, that. Yeah, there was one close up of it where it looked like bread, but otherwise I thought it was some sort of. Bone shell, or something or, you know, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. But anyway, she and then she leaves while her family's waking up. She does this mm-hmm. before people get up, and in the background you hear the cock crowing. Mm-hmm. And, I like that. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. the family wakes <laughs> up and they're all yelling for her, and then she sneaks out. And then we see her following Antonio over hill and dale. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So she's she's a stalker. She's a stalkery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She yeah. is yeah. definitely yep. obsessed and definitely yep. there is there is. I mean, mm-hmm. regardless of whether she's possessed or not, she's mm-hmm. definitely a little bent. Mm-hmm. Yes. There's some, there's something going on with her mm-hmm. um, that is well. Mm-hmm. We but, we don't know what's we don't have any idea what's going on as far as background. No. She no. says, you know, like she acts like they've had a relationship. Mm-hmm. And, you know, remember the last time when we talked and he's like, I never said anything to you, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So we don't know who's, mm-hmm. who's mm-hmm. pulling, who's like, who's, who's mm-hmm. wrong here. But I think she had you have an unreliable narrator. I think she had a sexual relationship with him. And then he went off to marry somebody respectable. Well, I think you know that given, people in the town looked at her as, yeah. you know, yeah. Given given yeah. what happens to her throughout the film, it I I got the impression that neither of those times were the first time mm-hmm. that a man abused her in such a way, right. and I and I kind of suspected he might have as well. Yeah. Um, in some, but you know that that's not given. You know, like he denies it, and right. they're never told. Right. But in other words, I I I'm just and then her father abuses her, mm-hmm. and I'm just thinking that all this abuse from men have just made mm-hmm. her, you know, unhinged. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Well, I definitely got the impression that she is like the the outcast in the village. Mm-hmm. You know definitely. that yeah. um that uh, you know whether she is ill or she has been touched or, you know, and not by touched, I mean like she has possessed or she has some sort of connection with the spiritual world or whatever, or she's a witch, but she clearly has, is preyed upon. And, Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, she, um, you know, I took it from the perspective of like um, that she was maybe different from the other women in the, in the village. And, and, so she was an easy, perhaps, you know, an easy target. And then she mm-hmm. just kind of took on all mm-hmm. the badness almost of the, yeah. of the village, the easy target. And she then can't, just, can't even walk home. Without. No. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then it was, um, yeah. And this, the way it, it was really, um, I, I used the word intense, but it was really sad and horrible. The stuff it that, was that happened to her and it just happened over and over Mm -hmm. and people just preyed on her and uh, took advantage of her and basically treated her like, like, yeah, like she took on all the evil of this village. And Mm -hmm. so she, then it was justified to treat her that way and kill her and, and, you know, do all this stuff. Um, But yet, she she you know, she wasn't a, a reliable narrator like you said mm-hmm. she clearly had a, a problem absolutely mm-hmm. <laughs> there yeah. was definitely something but um i felt like i empathized with her and i felt bad mm-hmm. for her and and um and something that really got to me was how um I I think it was maybe the first time we see her get reaped or something when he's like tearing off her clothes and, and binding her arms and Mm. her, and her feet. Mm -hmm. Um, And how you just see, yeah. yeah, And hog tied her and you see her the next day, just kind of like at the water, Mm -hmm. um, just hanging out the water at peace, you know? And I just think, you know, what did she do with the dress or is this, you know, like she just gets up and goes on, on with her day. This is just her, you know, her mm-hmm. life. And mm-hmm. um, yeah. definitely kind of like what we would correlate in the States to a witch hunt, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, there, be, mm-hmm. there was something, there might be something to what you're saying, Daphne, because if you noticed, she was always in black. Mm-hmm. She was always where she always wore dark clothes, mm-hmm. black and, and always in black. So that, um, I feel like maybe that's, I feel like the, that symbolized something and maybe mm-hmm. that's, goes along with what you said mm-hmm. she was just mm-hmm. the outcast and just the, all the evil mm-hmm. uh, she took on all the evil of the, of the village there or something or they put the they the villagers put put that, put on, that her, on her for her, sure yeah yeah, yeah. cuz it was in it was also um really hard to watch um how her family clearly loved her but also they treated her, her horribly her. yeah treated her oh. and i'm sure part of that was the time you know, like, you know, cor- corporal punishment or, you know, and, and stuff like that. And her, you know, being blamed, you know, being called a whore and all this stuff. But um, they protected her, 
And it, it was just, it, I felt like it was this really kind of complicated and maybe it added to the realism of this family that's trying, that cares about her. I mean, they try to get her help. It's totally twisted as far as like mm -hmm. the options they had, mm -hmm. but um, it just, it, it was so, it was such a tragedy. I feel like the whole movie was a tragedy from beginning to end. Um, I felt that way too. It was so, um, I feel every step she took, there was something mm -hmm. happening to her. She was getting, she was getting beat by her parents. She was mm -hmm. uh, even, even the, I don't know, the little priest guy or whatever he was, uh, Uncle, <sighs> Uncle Gregory yeah, or whatever. Just I mean, he yeah, raped. Her, I mean, right? he raped. He's straight out. That's yeah. I took her. that. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And um, the, he he was supposed to be the one that they left her there in his care mm -hmm. to, uh, and even he. Uh, betrayed yeah. her trust like that and it was just mm -hmm. amazingly downbeat uh mm -hmm. and um that she was going through all this and i felt terrible mm -hmm. for her, mm -hmm. for her character but um and she go ahead joe uh, she seems like uh so she we we don't know the the genesis of it right we're, mm -hmm. we're just kind of thrown into this situation mm -hmm. but but for whatever reason um she is suffers the brunt of the city's sort of I don't know superstition, witchcraft yeah. and yeah. demons superstition, and, yeah. and superstition, mm -hmm. and she's like, by the time we get to see what's going on, mm -hmm. there's no way she's getting out of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. mean, is she possessed? I don't know, but the, right. the, the entire town treats her that way, mm -hmm. and it wouldn't matter if she tried to change; they would still right. Yeah, now, um, even when she goes off to the convent for right, they don't know how to treat mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. She comes with the mm -hmm. you know she already has all this. I mean, she comes with a lot of baggage, mm -hmm. and they know it. They they see right. like it came with her, and they were it was wide open for them to know, and right, they knew about it too. So it was. Mm -hmm. But but at the same time, there was the the film puts into question often is does she have a link to the supernatural? Yes, which is because, so interesting, because, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, is she actually communicating with a spirit right. of some sort? Does she see the dead? You know, mm -hmm. um, after they've died, and right. of course, she thinks you know it, that whole scene with the boy was yes, oh that was great. That was the so highlight good. of the film yeah. as far yeah. as putting her position because what she sees is. I got this, you know, she saw the boy when he died. Mm -hmm. They see it as a horrible thing when it right. was perfectly innocent, right? Right. Yeah. Yes. Like, yes. If anything, so. they were almost comforting each other. I felt mm -hmm. like they they had this connection and they were comforting each other and kind mm -hmm. of both at this place by the water. Yeah, I loved that's another thing I loved about this movie. It was like, what the heck is going on? You know, is she does she is she ill? Is she is it post traumatic stress? Is she possessed? Is she really mm -hmm. um you know, does is she a witch? Um, because it just it never made it super clear what was what was going on, and I yeah. I really I really like that about it. And like the the scene when um, she's hogtied again in the bed, mm -hmm. it's like that was so disturbing to me in so many ways, just because it kind of it brought back uh, what happened to her with the mm -hmm. with the, the shepherd, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and um, but also it's like what's happening to her like is she being raped by the devil right now by the demon is she just like having a psychotic break who tied her up what's going on mm -hmm. you know and then when she sees the the boy at the at the at the lake or at the river it you know like you said it was so innocent and um comforting for both of them there and it's like they had a little bit of peace and yeah. but no you're right it was seen as her her somehow bringing his death. Yeah, she, she saw his death. Yeah. He was asking for water and you did. Yeah, yeah. He, the last thing he asked for was water and they go, right. she wouldn't let him take a drink. That's why he died. Right, right. I was like, oh man. And then they saw her. Ran, they she so ran hard. all the way over there to see him. I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, she found out and she ran over there. I thought it was also interesting how they, um, and I don't know, maybe, you know, Jeff said we don't really know kind of what she, what brought her up to this point. She was already kind of ostracized by the town but she also participated in everything you know she was in in the different rituals and she was mm -hmm. part of the town in some ways um so it even, was even after they stoned her she was part of yeah it, yeah. yeah right yeah they, she was the scapegoat for the town uh -huh. whenever something went mm -hmm. wrong it was right. I think so. seemed like right there was a 
at the beginning it mentions that narration where it talks um mm -hmm. you know kind of introduces what's going on they mention a book mm -hmm. by somebody and i think the guy's name was uh like oh, de martino or something huh. um but <laughs> well they don't he doesn't say anything it's, it's just there's just a little bit of a narration over the beginning of the film mm -hmm. and a quotate there's like italian words up there and then there's a uh, you know, the sub English translations, but it talks about this book that somebody made of all these pagan mm. rituals in Italy. And then a whole lot of the stuff in mm -hmm. this movie is from that. That's right. Later we find out a whole lot of books, a whole lot of the, the, the superstition that's in this movie comes from that book. So mm. one of the things was a spell called binding where mm. you bind yourself to so another person and then that person no longer has autonomy over what mm. they do. So mm -hmm. that was kind of the kind of thing that she was trying to do to him. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you could call it a love potion, but that was also mm -hmm. fit into this definition of binding. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the stuff that she did, this idea of getting them to drink, you know, she mixed her hair and her blood and then mm -hmm. uh, poured it into this wine and got him to drink some of it. That was mm -hmm. part of it. That's yeah. part now, of what that was. her yeah. reaction. Her reaction, I think, was a little bit more exposing her mental mm -hmm. yeah. instability yeah. at the time. Because right. Yeah. You like very witchy poo kind of yeah. reaction. Uh -huh. yeah. Tackling yeah. She's like, uh -huh. I gotcha. Yeah. 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 Ran yeah. off. Uh -huh. Um uh -huh. so yeah, she she definitely didn't help the situation with you know the town. She that it almost no, yeah. felt like the time she embraced it. Right. Yes. Yeah. And and she was that was part of who she was. She hasn't she I mean, she intentionally, you know, she was doing these things intentionally. Um, whether you know what motivated it, I don't know. But yeah, and then when she lost it on the 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 nuns and were just screaming at the at the nuns and mm -hmm. you know, um she definitely had that to her too, which was which I I felt like just added to added to the story added to her character because it really made me wonder what is going on you know <laughs> what is going on with her and mm -hmm. if she is really like that and if she is a bad person or a witch she is tormented as well and um even so, if yeah. she even if she is you know evil the stuff going on around her is just as evil yeah. um you know if not crueler in some ways um she yeah you know. she certainly she's either possessed or she believes it because exactly yeah the, even when the the, the mm -hmm. nun tries to get her to cross herself mm -hmm. she has a fit and then starts uh -huh. choking the nun yeah yeah right? on yeah. top of her and then she'll start there's several times during the movie where she's like you can't really describe it any way other than she's having fits mm -hmm. you know yeah. she's rolling around on the ground mm -hmm. or on the bed and arching uh mm -hmm. in uh stressed positions and things mm -hmm. yeah. And the, the exorcism that I was that came out of nowhere, it felt like suddenly we're doing an exorcism. Um, mm -hmm. And we get to see, you know, talking about arching. She, mm -hmm. she does mm -hmm. what we now call the spider walk from, right? Mm -hmm. right from uh, you know, even though it didn't make the first cut of the movie for Exorcist, everybody knows oh, about it, uh -huh. right? Because yeah, it was put right. back in when they mm -hmm. re released it. Oh, that's it. right. Yes. Um, but it's, 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 uh, yeah, notorious for that movie. Yeah, so this was ten this years one. earlier, but she did yeah. it, and she did it all herself, mm -hmm. and she kind of walks around, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's it's and it's, it's disturbing uh, as hell. Yes, <laughs> it's unnerving. I would uh -huh. say. Uh, <laughs> look on her face when they zoom in on her face, yeah. and that upside down face. Yes, mm -hmm. is just. Uh, I don't know if that's the, if that's an example of a of a uncanny valley, but it doesn't feel right. You know, well, that's what was I thought was so uh, great about her. Her, she could be gore, absolutely drop dead beautiful, and then the next minute you're like, "What's wrong with her?" Like, she, yeah. almost like her face takes on another, like like, like a mask is taken yeah. off or something. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like what we talked about in um, the White Reindeer. But I I uh -huh. loved that because she never <laughs> lost her beauty, but she she looked like demonic or possessed or something well, underneath, you know, this is another one of my favorite shots here on the bottom. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 It's like, she has fangs. Like I could imagine fangs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even I though thought it's, the not same a vampire, it's not a vampire movie, but I would, I could mm -hmm. put some fangs in there. 
<laughs> he's coming at her with this crucifix and i can't remember mm-hmm. is he uh reciting some latin or something uh-huh. and, and she just like gets this maniacal look on her face and just mm-hmm. shoves her face in the closer to the cross she like stuck her tongue yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 yeah 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 um the part the picture you had where she was uh doing the spider um walk and mm-hmm. her head was upside down i love the shot of the church upside down from her perspective oh, oh yes. yes i yes. mean yes. oh my gosh it was beautiful but also like an upside down mm-hmm. church i mean it was just it was awesome. <laughs> it, well, well, it, it makes it that much more exactly, creepy and scary. Exactly. It, yeah. That was great. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. You you might go into this movie thinking, is this really a horror film? You know, what class right? But when you get to scenes like this, and there's there's plenty of others, but mm-hmm. it is definitely has this horror, folk horror yeah. element. Yeah. To it. You know, it's it's mm-hmm. not a this this is probably the the this this uh-huh. exorcism part is the you know where it gets full into it but right it's um yeah it was quite a yeah. scene i was that's uh-huh. that struck me and and also uh-huh. black and white yes seeing uh-huh. this in black and white uh-huh. is just so rich uh-huh. um, uh, yeah a lot of that with her with her i mean it was it's rich in the sets and and definitely in the the scenes the landscape but even with uh-huh. like her face and the face of the people um and it was just it just really added really added to to it somehow yeah mm-hmm. and the, the elders you know they're so wrinkly which they're probably yes. younger than we are but <laughs> well, yeah is, maybe yeah this is kind of an example of uh, a pose that she has frequently throughout the movie i just found this and i didn't have time to to structure it but uh the the one on the right mm-hmm. she mm-hmm. is screaming literally screaming mm-hmm. clutching with her hands frequently mm-hmm. throughout this movie mm-hmm. because she's so tormented yeah um it's it's uh that well that giuseppe too is it giuseppe or is it it was the uncle that sticks his hand down the front of her dress uncle giuseppe yeah. they call it yeah. 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 And, yeah yeah right right but it's just like oh so there's all these things that they do to her you know just like justifying it somehow Mm -hmm. and it's just and even when you're seeing her it's like oh my gosh she's such an easy target i mean and she just has to go with it well she doesn't have to but they she thinks maybe this person's trying to help me or she's trusting them well her family left them with yeah exactly with the uncle yeah the uncle Giuseppe, your wicked uncle ernie Mm -hmm. Um, but i did i also liked like uh at the um you know, she was lots of times she would like you were saying, you know, her, her knuckles were like clenched a lot. And and but there were other times when she was really um, quiet and at and um, it almost looked like at peace, like when she was by the river, by when the she river, was yeah. touching that when she was touching the the tree where the person um, hanged themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, she was like had this connection to it. It's like she definitely had like this connection to something. She, she was know. like caressing that tree. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or, or, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, she said too, the barbed wire that they put up. Uh, yes. yes. Oh, they yeah, told that her was, that was good. she she said, and I I'm not sure where I saw this, but she said that uh um they just told me to get through the barbed wire. Mm-hmm. They nobody said how or arranged mm-hmm. it to make it easy. So I just mm-hmm. walked up there and started kind of forcing my way through it. So she mm-hmm. actually did get, you know, her hand scratched and mm-hmm. and uh Wow. Uh, anyway. Yes. Um, yeah. Loved, it, 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 sorry to interrupt ahead. again. I was just no. there, when I was, I was just thinking of so many things that I liked about her character too, because she was, you know, it's so strange because she was in some ways so I don't know if evil is the right word, but she was something. Um, but then she was so innocent sometimes too, like when she like when her family was digging up the hole to hide her, she was just sitting there eating. Mm-hmm. eating an apple and her family was looking at her just like what are we gonna do with you yeah i mean it was yeah. like yeah her, um, there was something, and she was, was just it? but it was just like this is our daughter we're protecting her mm-hmm. um when she was sitting in the tree when they were doing that yes. um, yeah yeah that was that the funeral uh what was no that, no, that was the they were trying to i think they were trying to stop the rain coming or oh right right, right or something right, right, right. so yeah. also and then, and then very that's what started the <laughs> yeah, yeah. she got yeah. she got the blame for it not working. Yeah, she, just because yeah. she was, was the there yeah. and she was just in the tree watching 
eating an apple, you know, yeah. and it was just, it, it, it was really interesting. She were, and she reminded me of, um, when I, when I was younger, I lived, I lived for a long time near the university of Washington. And, um, there were a lot of, um, people who are homeless that live there and you kind of get to know these people because they live there too. They're your neighbors. And there was this young woman who, who, I, I made me think of her because she was probably in her early twenties and definitely had a mental illness and, but just kind of walked around. And I remember always thinking, Oh my God, who's taking advantage of you? Who's, you know, yeah. what kind of position. I, and um, so it just really made me think of her and just think about how real um kind of this, these people are, um, mm -hmm. even though they get turned into characters like the witch or the old lady that lives outside of town or, mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, but um, they represent uh, a truth kind of. Yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. and uh, also just with the religion and it being so, another thing that got to me was how similar the, the Catholicism was to the stuff that they were saying she was doing. I mean, it was mm -hmm. like, two sides of the same coin <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I, 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 moving into some film work real quick before jeff jumps back in um <laughs> like i want to go back to the scene when she approaches the uh, boy that's on his on the on his literally on his deathbed he's already passed away uh -huh. mm -hmm. but she takes this long like walk up a sidewalk beside a building and there's all the people there grieving you can hear yeah. the the family inside wailing yeah. um, you're 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 not there yet mm -hmm. but there the way the director or the cinematographer positioned everybody for her to like zigzag through them all i mean they're mm -hmm. not clustered yeah. together yeah but they're mm -hmm. in like little mini clusters it was right. really gorgeous the just the positioning was yeah I, it doesn't seem like it was arbitrary, right? It felt right. like there was right, a reason right. for them to be there. Right. Um, although it did have one of the few times I saw people looking at the camera. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when, she, when she would pass like the little boy that was up mm -hmm. against the wall with her, her mom or little girl. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, went, he looked at her and then he went to the camera. <laughs> so, but he didn't do it long. <laughs> well, I think the film followed that uh, – through a lot of it, like I mm -hmm. think Daphne brought up before, it it felt natural. Mm -hmm. It felt more mm -hmm. natural, mm -hmm. uh, um, and it, it feels more natural that people will be spread apart a little bit, mm -hmm. getting comfort from each other instead of mm -hmm. in big big groups and everything. And uh, I really appreciated that because mm -hmm. it that's what kept me interested in the movie because it mm -hmm. felt it felt real. It felt like it was really happening, you know. Yeah. I also I also liked how that, particularly in that scene, it, it made me think too about how tight this village is and how it, it almost felt like a ritual that they were doing now. Like mm -hmm. everybody knew this kid was dying. So they all moved out and took their little places. And, you know, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, whether it was just kind of showing support or if it was, well, this is what you do when someone is dying. And um, so they the cinematographer and this this kind of the naturalness of it just i feel like it just i don't know it's like it engulfed the whole thing it just it gave you the feels on so many different you know yeah, visually yeah. but also you're like yeah, i yeah. believe this about the town it seems genuine it, well there's know? a there's a it kind of has a parallel with the barbed wire later this around it yeah well yeah because yeah, she has to get through the barbed wire like she has uh -huh. to get through the town to find mm -hmm. out about the boy mm -hmm. yeah get through right. the town's oh, people yeah. Mm -hmm. um but you know the barbed wire of course is a little sharper but and then the <laughs> doctor comes the doctor comes up to her and he's like berates her right right yeah. away like oh. uh the, the guy i was trying to think of was ernesto di martino hmm. and they say something i i'm almost sure they mentioned his name at the beginning in that narration i'm, I'm not sure maybe i got it from the commentary on the on the blu-ray which again was done uh, another similarity the commentary was done by cat ellinger mm. oh, who yeah. also did the the white reindeer commentary um anyway she does the, a lot of those kind of the kind of well uh, she's uh, she's very knowledgeable too yeah so she's really she's smart, interesting yeah. really interesting um i i, I hate to switch because it's a great conversation but the uh talk a little bit about her career um mm -hmm. so one of the things there's a little short 
on this Blu-ray that's done by Tim Lucas. And he got to be friends with her, uh, Delia Lavi, when he interviewed her about the whip and the body. Mm. And that she was just so nice and so forthcoming that he interviewed her about almost her entire career and then got to be friends with her. Wow. Um, and uh, there was a story, and I think it's in her bio in there somewhere, about how, first off, you know, that she could do this spider walk thing because she had training as a dancer. And that the film, she was born in Israel or Palestine, and, and the film The Juggler that starred Kirk Douglas, did anybody else get this anywhere? Mm-hmm. Um, was filmed in her village. And so the, the kids would all go hang out. She was like 10 years old. And she would mm-hmm. hang out around, Kirk Douglas was a big star, you know. And, and at some point, a person that was in the crew who was Swedish, but also aided by everybody in the crew, including they thought Kirk Douglas gave her a significant amount, financed her to go to Sweden and study dance under this person when she was like 10 years old. Wow. So then 10 years later, she's in uh, this movie with Kirk Douglas. (laughs) (laughs) And he didn't remember her. I mean, she, you would not recognize her. Right. And then on top of that, Tim Lucas, in his research, found a picture of Kurt Douglas during the filming of The Juggler, and there's this little girl standing behind him, and it was her. her. Oh, yeah, wow. it was it was on eBay, so he bought it and and sent it to her. Oh, uh, and she was thrilled and, and had it <laughs> framed and was hanging in her house, you know. So it's just just cool stuff. And I forget the name of the movie she's in here with uh, Douglas. Something about. Uh, yeah, two weeks in another town was it, and there was a there was a bunch of well known people in it. Uh, the next picture there was Lord Jim, where she was the female lead with Peter O'Toole, the O'Toole. based on the Joseph Conrad book. The bottom one from the Whip and the Body, uh, the Baba film with Christopher Lee, that was released the same year as this. Um, and then this top picture, she was in a, uh, Western called Catlow that oh. starred Yule Brenner. Yule Brenner. And she's like a <laughs> no nonsense woman in this. And I think a lot of times she, she played ethnic characters in American films because we just can't imagine what else they could do, I guess. But it, I think <laughs> she was a, uh, you know, Mexican woman in this, but she's fighting him. She's got a hold of the rifle barrel in there. They're fighting that would be out. so cool. Yeah, fighting Will Brenner. Yeah. <laughs> it would, wouldn't it? Uh, and then the bottom picture is her with uh, Stella Stevens in. Oh, look at the, that! Oh, wow, it is. Yes, the first Matt Helm movie, The Silencers. And there's a huge cast of uh, women in that, and she was also in uh, Casino Royale. The James mm-hmm. Bond. I did read that, yeah. Woody Sauer Allen. Opposite Woody Allen. Woody Allen. And, uh, she was in another one that was like a, I, I forget the name of this one. Well, I got it right here in front of me. Um, there was a movie called The, the Magnificent Young Men and Their Flying Machines. Oh, mm-hmm. she's in that? Oh, I love that. No, she was in okay. one called Those Fantastic <laughs> Flying Fools. Oh, so I don't, I, I don't know if this is a, like a knockoff. Oh, right. I, I said the first one just because the title was so similar. <laughs> Reel them in, Jeff. You uh, got him hooked. I got him. <laughs> Terry Thomas is in it, so it's all connected. Somehow. Yeah, yeah. Ten Little Indians. Uh, That's one I want to watch again. It wasn't an all-star cast, but it had uh, Hugh O'Brien, which... Uh, for an old Western guy like me, played Wyatt Earp in the 50s. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway. That was such a good movie. But she she, she quit acting in uh, 71, and uh, she still thinks that this was her best role in El Demonio. It's and amazing. She felt like that. She no. does. She really shows an acting ability. Yeah. Uh, but then I'd like I, to know I, what her take on the character was. If yeah. she maybe thought the character really was possessed or, or mm-hmm. what. That would be interesting because mm-hmm. she could have totally, um, 
I mean, some of the stuff that she did in that movie could totally have just been over the top. And yeah, yeah. Um, and then she also well, you, had this like sexualism about it too, but it wasn't, I don't know. It was, it, it she did well, a really good job. She yeah, did she a did. really good job. Yeah. Well, you did yeah, your was, answer. You're absolutely right. And the desired, that guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. The Thanks. only thing that, that is, that really points to supernatural mm -hmm. is the boy along the street yeah yeah but it could be could be you heard just having a, have yeah. a hallucination hallucination a, yeah but yeah. It, it's telling that it happened right then when mm -hmm. he was dying and he doesn't mm -hmm. say he doesn't say i've recovered and i'm well mm -hmm. he says i'm not sick anymore don't worry about me yeah. you know yeah. mm -hmm. uh, well the, the spider walk scene but uh, you know is she just <laughs> yeah, but, but she doesn't get cured. She doesn't get exercised, right? Mm -hmm. so you, so you, she goes to no the because she and... she's whatever they asked her to do. She she refuses to do anything. She refuses yeah. to you know do the crusher mm -hmm. heart. Yeah, you start she choking really... nuns. You're a yeah. Ring <laughs> I don't this, think uh, you can be exercised. At that. Yeah, yeah say this a... prayer, and she's That's like, too far, no. Right? <laughs> well, did she call her like an old hag, something too, or she yeah. like insulted I her as well? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was she was going at it. Yeah. Penguins everywhere. <laughs> All right, guys, do we have final thoughts or anything else we want to? Please see this. Yes. Yeah. If you've not stuff. seen this movie, do yourself a favor, and it's a very it's currently on thing. Shutter, but I think it might be on YouTube. I didn't. I, I didn't I go. Got watched on Tubi. Tubi too. Um, it's on, also on Tubi, mm -hmm. so you can you can see it for free. It's an was it a good quality? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was, I was rich. I mean, it looked beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there was yeah there was this uh, this uh, a documentary that uh, that came out on folk horror called Woodlands Dark and Days Bewitched: A History Which is of on Shutter Folk too. Horror. Yeah, very good. That's on Shutter, mm -hmm. and uh, they talk about this movie in part five, all the haunts be ours. But I also, Severin also put out this box set um, that's got, I can't even tell you how many movies are in there. Probably about 20. Wow. And there's not a single one of them I ever heard of before. <laughs> cool. Uh, and this one is uh, a really good one. And there's some other ones. And, and the, uh, you were talking with uh, somebody on Facebook about folk horror. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Um I forget who it was. Was it Steve? Yeah, I can't remember right now either, but mm -hmm. um, I mentioned it last time, yeah. Andy Morton. Yes, Andy. Um, mm -hmm. The movies that he mentioned are in this cool. set too, so mm -hmm. I'm slowly working my way through that, but uh, there's some odd films in there, but they're really interesting, and there's a lot of good, good stuff that goes with it. Well, like Chad said, it's a slow, it's slow burn. I know some people, I love slow burn movies, so I'm not the best person to listen to. But if so, if you're not, not into that, you know, it might be not your thing, but um, yeah, it is really, TikTok really good. Five minutes from <laughs> I mean, if you're a, cinema, a cinephile, watch it for the cinematography. Yeah, the cinematography black and white is amazing. Alone and the landscapes. Yeah, will totally so beautiful. You. Um, yeah, yeah. Even if you don't like the movie, Incredible. Right. you'll just you'll. The, well, the, and she's people, wonderful. The buildings, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I mm -hmm. would say the same thing with her. She's wonderful, even if you didn't mm -hmm. like the movie. She, you yeah, can't. she is. She really is. And she I, is a this conversation has illuminated a lot for this movie for me as well because I did walk when I was walk out when I watched mm -hmm. this movie. I, I was kind of like, what you know, what what did I really watch here? Mm -hmm. I, you know, and I was questioning like. Yeah, I liked the, the aspects of it, but what about the story through point? And I think mm -hmm. I think we covered a lot here that mm -hmm. really put a lot of pieces into place. So thank mm -hmm. you guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, great, great pick. Um all right, we ready for some feedback? Yeah. We got a ton. Let's see where are we at. Yeah, we can do this. Um yeah. so the first one, I'm gonna read the first one. All right. <laughs> I've mentioned this. I can't remember if I mentioned this to you guys. I mentioned it a couple times to people. Uh, this is from UN Owen. Un Owen. Unknown. <laughs> unknown. Uh, mm -hmm. er, 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 uh, episode 131, The Skeleton of Mrs. Morales. This is a review 
yet it takes more time to watch this than watching the film itself. Mm -hmm. Buggy, buggy eyed emoji. (laughs) Siskel and Ebert could give good, knowledgeable, actual reviews for three major releases each, as well as new to video in under 30 minutes. To be honest, that means there's a total of six exclamation point reviews in 30 (laughs) minutes. Who in their right mind has this much time to sit and listen for this long? This isn't anything close to what a review is. Correct. Yes. Okay. <laughs> An astute observation unknown. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> you know, I and, and this generated a conversation where I was asking people, what else could we call these? We call them a horror movie review. What else could we call it? And I, in the end, it doesn't really matter because it's what we're really doing is, uh, from my point of view, is it's friends sitting around the table talking about movies they love and discovering new movies mm-hmm. and talking about them. And that's what it is. You know, mm-hmm. somewhere buried in there is a review, but we tried to provide knowledge, but we also um, hope well, to be far, somewhat entertaining. It's, it's far more in depth, right? Cause I mean, like with this one, we get into what does this mean? What are you know, look at this shot. What is, mm-hmm. what is the character's motivations? There, there's so much more to talk about a film other than just a straight up review, and, yeah. and that's what most of this. Yeah, there's, there's hundreds, hundreds of other uh, channels, yeah. stations that do this movie suck because blah 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 blah, and then blah, blah, blah. that last five minutes, and you're done. Mm-hmm. But you right. don't really. We get into the meat of it. We get into the emotions of the movie. We don't, and that's what. That's why I love this so much. Is we don't just get the surface. We dig into it. And find out what's going on, how it made us feel, um, who was doing what at this time at the same movie, uh, the stars, you know, what other movies they've been in. It's it's just a deeper dive into it than just a, a cursory review. And uh, it's something that I really like about it is hearing like when Doc was saying, "Well, when I first saw this, it's, you know, I wasn't sure about it," or and it's like I love hearing other people's perspectives and talking about it because it's like, yeah, I didn't think about that. Or yeah, I really like slow burn, but I can see what you're saying or, or, you know, or making me think about things, things more. And I don't know. I think it's cool. uh, You're you're right. There's a bunch of times when I've started out not liking the movie at all, but then you hear Mm -hmm. other people's outlooks on it and how they see it and everything. And it sort of changes your, changes your uh, outlook on it a little bit well and the, the, we do a bunch of movies too where if we especially like the slow burn type where i watch like 15 minutes or so and if i was just watching these on my own i might <laughs> just go nah and switch to something else you I know have, I, I've I'm, done want, that on some. <laughs> I'm wanting something to grab me but, I mean, but these because we're doing them i stick with them and find out wow this is well worth you know doing that so and you like to watch them more than once you bugger i do i do i won't tell you how many times i watch this and then there's sometimes when we don't ever agree on anything like yes girl yeah. walks home alone at night or yeah. uh yeah. <laughs> or a, a whole bunch yeah of so and, and, and that's what i always say if you're looking if you're looking for a, a five to seven minute pow 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 movie review this this ain't for you Mm-hmm. And and there's tons of other stuff. Yeah. Frankly, if that's what you're looking for, you didn't stick around long enough to hear me say that. <laughs> 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 but I do appreciate you writing in, though. Anyway, absolutely. right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Even though you remain mm-hmm. unknown. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> I get it now. <laughs> All right. Episode 148, Even the Wind is Afraid. Let's see. That was a... Uh, uh, that was Whitney's, I think. That was a Whitney pick. Uh, mm-hmm. Daphne, would you like to read this from... Sure. Our our, uh, our own, you know, our part of our research department, along with Jerry Chandler, <laughs> West Georgia. <laughs> West Georgia. I, I was just closing down the little thing with um, that last person we talked about. And that was about the skeleton of Mrs. Morales. That's an amazing, it, awesome movie. It is. <laughs> anyway, it is. so there's your short review. That's a, a skeleton of Mrs. Yeah, Morales. It's an amazing, is an awesome, awesome, movie. amazing, awesome yeah. movie. Anywho, um, even the wind is afraid. West Delorio. 
Hey, Gru Crew, this sounds like a great film, and thank you for bringing it to our attention. In regards to Gothic, it was briefly, briefly discussed as a topic. What is Gothic? Well, this could be a podcast unto itself, and a podcast I would listen to, personally. I think the best and most general aspect of Gothic is atmosphere. Of course, we all think of Victorian era, horse and carriage, castle settings, but there is such a genre as modern and urban Gothic set in cities. There's a reason why Batman is set in a city called Gotham, or think of futuristic Gothic, like 1979's Alien. That has a perfect Gothic story set in outer space. I think what it comes down to is the atmosphere and the feeling the story creates. It doesn't have to be set on the moors or in ruined cemeteries, but a few shadows couldn't hurt. Mm. Ciao for now. West DeLorio. D-Oreo. D-Oreo. <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, thanks, Wes. I appreciate that. Um, and I think that comment was from Gregory Crosby. Was that about uh, Rosemary's Baby? Yeah. I think when we discussed that, or maybe it was with Even the Wind is Afraid. I think maybe that was what it was, because that's what this comment was. Mm -hmm. uh, duh. I'm sorry. Thanks, so Wes. D-Oreo. Sorry, Wes <laughs> D-Oreo. I'm still new. No, you're I'm not. Uh, I can't uh, use that as an excuse anymore. Dang it. We're okay. not going to let you do that. Thank okay. you. So now we have uh, a couple... <laughs> We have a couple on Rosemary's Baby. Um, Doc, you want to take Gregory Crosby? Yes, I will. Gregory Crosby says, I like you gave me the short one. Thank you. Um, uh, an epic episode, and deservedly so. Rosemary's Baby is a near-perfect horror film. That me. There you go. Uh, anchored by Mia Farrow's pitch-perfect performance. Uh, the scene with her in the phone booth when she's nearly giddy with terror at the fact that everyone is part of the conspiracy against her is my favorite cinematic emblem of peak paranoia. I often walk past the Dakota here in New York City and often uh, think of poor Rosemary or mm. lost John Lennon. Uh, greatly looking forward to The White Reindeer, a film that's long been on my uh, watch list. Also, think of my gothic comment as, you know, a teaser trailer. Yay! Uh, he's the one that said, talked about Gothic, that he mm -hmm. could write a, a book on Gothic. Mm -hmm. um, or if he was invited to be on an episode, we could talk about it. <laughs> there you go. At which, hey, hey, you know. Like I said, it sounds you. great. <laughs> um, my brain's my brain's working. Oh, no. no. Uh, Chad, <laughs> and here's one from Mikey Z on Rosemary's Baby. Okay, Mikey Z says, first came across this in Mad Magazine as Rosemary's Boo Boo <laughs> as a youngster in the late 60s. Oh my God, I love it. At that age, six, I didn't understand what the movie was about. I just liked the artwork. It was probably Jack Davis, which I think was either Mort Drucker or Jack Davis. <laughs> uh, saw the film on TV years later, I think in the late 70s, and while I never really liked Mia Farrow, she was fine in this film. She was fine. Yeah, she's all right. This is a film that asks, how far will you go to get what you want? Mm. Mm -hmm. Also taught me to never trust old people. And shit, I am <laughs> now an old people. <laughs> <laughs> one of Polanski's best, but one has to wonder if this might have been, had some morbid connection to the fate of his then wife, Sharon Tate, on mm. August 9th, 1969. Yep. By the way, the group, the the glue clue, uh, the Gru crew might want to do the fearless vampire killers, or as it's AKA, pardon me, but your teeth are in my neck from 1967. Can't wait for you guys to do Repulsion on classics. Great podcast, guys, to the truly classic 60s film that ushered in later films like The Exorcist mm. and The Omen. Doc was there for a good one. Keep being classic Gru crew. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, thanks, thanks Mike. Mikey. Yeah, that old people thing. I, you know, when I was in, uh, shortly after high school, the slogan was uh, "Never trust anybody over 30. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Logan's Run. <laughs> oh, this was before Logan. <laughs> this was before Logan's Run, but yeah. Um. All right, where are we at? The White Reindeer. Um, 
Eleanor C. Doc. Yes. I'll read that one. This is about episode 151, The White Reindeer. All right, Eleanor. A uh, great episode about an interesting movie that I'll definitely want to see now. Uh, as a check, I can confirm that uh, Billy Saab does, uh, does indeed translate to The White Reindeer. Also, Chad's somewhat successful attempt at reading Czech is funny. What do you mean, somewhat? <laughs> it was perfect. I appreciate that. We yes. asked somebody to, to explain this to us, and they did. Eleanor, you're wonderful. Yay. Um, awesome. Thank you, Eleanor. Yes, thank you. Yeah, we don't know what we're doing. We just, you know, <laughs> some some stuff I put through the uh, translator on Google and listen to it and try to repeat it the same way. And when it comes time to say it, my mouth does its own thing. You know, it's just. Uh, uh, you do better than I do. Let's just put it that way. Did we, yeah, well, I don't know. Um, Daphne, here's one from TJ Fowler on the TJ. White Reindeer. You, TJ. Do you remember TJ? Did you know who TJ Fowler was? I don't think so. I'm not remembering. No, sorry. I'm not good well, with Doc, name. maybe you want to. Yeah, TJ. <laughs> I, I will read this. TJ has been one of our listeners for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Great to hear from him again. Of course, uh, he has a connection uh, and we're, he's, he's sharing it with us. Oh, uh, I think you mentioned that. Maybe you yeah. said something about TJ Fowler in the podcast. Well, I, I, I mentioned, I couldn't think of his last name, oh. but I mentioned him because he lives in Finland. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That maybe he Perfect. can correct this stuff I'm saying about the history or the indigenous people, but All that right. isn't what he writes. No, 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 it's not, but it's great. This, <laughs> yeah. he, just, he just says, did I mention this to you guys years ago? Not sure. I watched it here in Finland a long time ago. These Finns certainly have unique ideas for horror sometimes. Vampire deer or whatever was going on in this film. Oh, well. <laughs> TJ, uh, I think... Thank you. He wrote some reviews, didn't he? He did. He wrote for us mm -hmm. for a while. Yeah, and cool. I think he also, uh, there was a while there where you had people uh, send comments by, I forget what the app was, but you could send an audio file. Mm -hmm. could... <coughs> and I think he did that too. Oh, yes, he did. Uh, I remember. <laughs> photographer. He, he, I don't know he, what he's doing now, but he was a hell of a photographer. Yeah, he was. Uh, originally from is. Tennessee, I believe. So. What's that? originally from Tennessee. Yes, and and uh did a lot of uh I think he I think he moved to Finland for the metal bands. Hmm. I, I don't yeah. know for sure why he went there, but that's a lot of what he did. Uh anyway. I think it well, might come back to us, TJ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More comments. Good, good to hear from him. It's been a Who while. feels like this is the last one and the longest one? Uh the White Reindeer from Jerry Chandler. It sounds like we're ready to read, read poetry from mm. fifth grade class. I'll well, we can it. take turns. Oh, you got it? Okay. Well, you want to read one and I'll read a paragraph? You read a paragraph? Yeah, sure. That sounds good. You go first. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> this will be interesting. This is such a beautifully crafted movie. I've cited this one a few times in the past, talking about both off the beaten path or underseen vampire and witchcraft movies. You all brought up Haxon, and it was interesting your minds went there. Not only have I linked the two in discussions in the past, since more people have known Haxon than this film, but I have been hoping for years now that the Criterion Collection would finally get around to releasing a remastered with some of the reported footage, either five or seven minutes, depending on reports, dropped from other overseas remasters. I agree. Criterion I'm would be lovely. You. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got to see this film once as a part of a little weekend film festival back in the late 90s when I was living in Florida. I had never heard of it before. If I recall correctly, I had serious brain fart and was wondering why they were showing a Charles Bronson Western, The White, the White Buffalo, Buffalo <laughs> at a film festival being billed as gothic horror oriented. Thankfully, it was sandwiched in between films I wanted to see or I might not have seen. Might not have seen it. Totally blew me away. It's actually annoyed me over the years that I've never been a US, there's never been a US release. Although given the commercial motivation of most distributors, I can almost understand why. Still hate it though. The I think we watched watched it on YouTube, mm -hmm. and it was a beautiful. I don't know if it was the Criterion one, but it was a beautiful uh, copy of it. It was just crisp and clear, and from, mm -hmm. and very. I nice. think it's a copy of the Blu-ray from uh, UK that okay. somebody mm -hmm. transferred somehow. 
Um, but yeah, it's much better than, and archive.org also had, I think the same, well, it wasn't the same copy because it had uh, Spanish translation imposed on it too. Mm-hmm. But anyway, they're much better. That, that's why I waited mm-hmm. so long to pick it because I kept looking and there was so much, they were so dark. It was hard to, but these are not bad. Mm-hmm. The most recent copy on YouTube is way more watchable than others I've seen here and there over the years, but it still looks darker in spots than I remember the film being. Still, that could just be my memory. Yeah, I'd love to see this in a theater. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wish more people knew about this damn film. <laughs> Hopefully when this you podcast <laughs> goes live, a lot of DOH fans will share this one as much as I intend to and try to get the word out about it. That would be cool. That's awesome. Excellent. Um, related to Andy L's comment on episode 146, Fantastic Voyage, and Isaac Asimov read during, this epi- uh, during the episode, I thought the robot novels were my first Asimov novels. I found out much later that some beat up secondhand books I got that were pure space adventure pulp fun were his. The copies I had were written by Paul French. It wasn't until much later when a double day re-released them with the byline Azek Asimov writing as Paul French that I knew and I knew they were his. Chad. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Lucky yeah, Star what? series, the Lucky Star series. Yeah, I don't know why he was, he, he like said, like he was admonishing you for something, but there was nothing else there. So he, he's probably just doing it out of pure meanness. <laughs> I always had the impression yeah. that these were sort of young adult science fiction, but I, I think I'm probably wrong about that. Um, anyway. Lucky Star was the character's name. No, Jerry's a good guy. Jerry, he is. He is. Jerry's appreciate the knowledge. knows everything about everything. I think he's seen every horror movie. It uh, sounds like it. Yeah, that's near. awesome. Uh, well, that's that's it for feedback for today. I appreciate it, people. Everybody, uh, leave your comments on uh, Gruesome Magazine YouTube channel. Send emails to feedback at gruesomemagazine dot com, or you could. Uh, um, make comments on the website under the episodes or even in the Facebook page. Uh, Gruesome Magazine's H&R and DOH podcast Facebook group. Join Ta-da. us. Join us. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we love feedback. So please, anything, you know, usually at least once during an episode we go, maybe some of our listeners will know the answer to this. So uh, we that was cool. Cool. They usually do. Those. Awesome. Mm-hmm. That means they're smarter than we are. Yeah. Are we all well, ready to admit that now? I'm, yes. I'm, oh, well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just assume it was that way. <laughs> I assume everybody's smarter than me. Exactly. <laughs> I used to try to cut out the, when we say something stupid, but then there wouldn't be any podcast. So mm-hmm. I would. So. Mm-hmm. See? No, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> you guys are good. I'm the one that does the stupid stuff. No. Uh, well, group believers, that's it for this. Told episode. you, Daphne. <laughs> Every two weeks, we'll be focusing on a specific film released between 1920 and 1969. Next up is one chosen by Doc. Uh oh, watch out, guys! I don't know why, but I'm seeing. Well, go ahead. What do we? What do we watch? Oh, you want me to say? Okay. Um, I can't wait to discuss this film. I've only seen it once, but there's a little nitpick I'll share with you next week that this movie had with me when I was a kid. Um, I was a teenage werewolf. I'm so excited. (laughs) Michael Landon. Michael Landon. Little little Joe or (laughs) AKA Pa. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yay. Little Joe. I... (laughs) <laughs> I was a huge Little Joe fan growing up. Yes, yes. Yep. <laughs> well, he had a he had that cool jacket. I don't know why I was. I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. Hey, and don't forget, you know, uh, if you uh, contribute to Patreon, you can uh, get these episodes like within a day or two of when we um, when we record them. And they don't usually go public for like 12 days to two weeks. So 
a small amount monthly to help pay for hosting costs and software and our immense salaries yeah. that doc just doubled. Yeah, he did. We did pay for domains this week. <laughs> did we? Good. Yes. Good. See, see what I mean? Um, so we'd appreciate it. Um, catch us again here in two weeks <laughs> for another do. great horror movie. As only decades of horror can do it. Say good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, good night everybody. everybody. Gruesome Magazine.